Few figures in human history have shaped our understanding of philosophy, ethics, and the pursuit of wisdom as much as Socrates. The father of Western philosophy, Socrates is widely known for his Socratic method, whereby knowledge is sought through questions and answers. However, one of the lesser discussed aspects of Socrates' philosophical stance is his strong opposition to the democratic form of government. Why did Socrates, a thinker who valued wisdom and virtue above all, harbour such an antipathy towards democracy? Before delving into Socrates' objections to democracy, it's crucial to understand the political climate of Athens during his lifetime. In the 5th century BCE, Athens was the cradle of democracy. It was here that a system was established allowing every free male citizen a say in the decision-making process of the state. Although revolutionary for its time, this Athenian democracy was starkly different from modern representative democracies as it functioned on the basis of direct participation, rather than elected representatives. In order to fully comprehend Socrates' disdain for democracy, it's necessary to gain insight into his philosophical orientation. Socrates championed the pursuit of wisdom, moral virtue, and the good life, eudaimonia. He believed that most people were unenlightened and therefore incapable of making wise decisions about moral and political matters. Socrates championed the notion that an individual's main concern should be the health of the soul, prioritizing moral virtues over physical or material wealth. He held an elitist perspective, believing that only those who had contemplated issues of justice, goodness, and truth were fit to rule. Given these philosophical underpinnings, Socrates found Athenian democracy problematic for several reasons. The first, the dangers of majority rule. Socrates had deep reservations about the rule of the majority, which is the foundation of democratic government. He believed that the majority of the populace were not inherently wise or just, and could, therefore, make flawed decisions. Socrates was highly critical of the Athenian public's ability to be easily swayed by skilled rhetoricians, regardless of the moral rectitude or practical value of their proposals. The second was lack of expertise. Democracy, by its very nature, implies that every citizen has an equal say in matters of the state. Socrates argued against this premise. He believed that just as one would want an expert helmsman to steer a ship, or a trained doctor to administer medicine, similarly political decisions should be made by those who possess knowledge and understanding of governance. And the third was potential for demagoguery. Socrates was wary of the propensity of democracy to devolve into demagoguery. He recognized that persuasive speakers could easily manipulate the emotions of the masses for their own ends. This concern was later echoed by his student Plato in his work The Republic, where he discussed the potential transformation of democracy into tyranny. Socrates' critique of democracy was not without personal consequences. In 399 BCE, he was put on trial on charges of impiety and corrupting the youth. His constant questioning of traditional beliefs and his criticism of Athenian democracy had made him many enemies. Despite having the chance to escape, Socrates chose to accept his sentence, a lethal dose of the poison hemlock. This event was a tragic instance of the very issues Socrates found with democracy, the tyranny of the majority and the punishment of dissenting voices. Socrates' dissent against democracy should not be seen as an outright rejection of the democratic idea itself, but rather a critique of the way it was implemented in Athenian society. He sought a system where wisdom and knowledge were valued over uninformed opinion. His criticisms were directed towards a democratic system that allowed, and even encouraged, decisions based on the whims of the uninformed majority. While his proposed alternative, the philosopher King model, as detailed by his student Plato, carries its own issues of potential autocracy and elitism, his criticism remains valuable. It highlights the potential pitfalls of democracy, susceptibility to demagoguery, the danger of majority rule without adequate safeguards for minorities, and the potential for crucial decisions to be made without proper expertise. In the modern world, representative democracies with checks and balances have evolved to address some of these concerns. They attempt to ensure that those in power are, at least to some degree, knowledgeable about governance. Similarly, constitutional protections are in place to guard against the tyranny of the majority. Still, Socrates' critique resonates with contemporary political issues, such as the spread of misinformation, the impact of populism, and the value of expertise in political decision-making. Even today, we grapple with questions about who should have the right to govern, and how to balance the will of the majority with the rights and protection of minorities. In conclusion, while Socrates may have hated democracy in its Athenian form, 
His critique can be seen as a call to continuously examine, challenge and improve our systems of governance. His dissent serves as a timeless reminder that the pursuit of a just society requires constant vigilance, critical thinking and an unyielding commitment to wisdom and truth.